You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. This episode is titled, The Universe Smells You. Now, what do I mean by that? The universe smells you. Well, if you imagine, and this is a metaphor, if you imagine that you're looking at someone and they're extremely well-dressed and they look good and they look very presentable, but you get a lot closer and you find they've got really bad body odor. Now, again, this is only a metaphor. Well, I don't know about you. You may be into that, but that's not really, that's not my thing. So I would move away from the person if they had really bad body odor. Well, the universe is kind of the same in that we tend to look at life externally for things that we can see, like the person I talked about that's well-dressed and looks good, but you get closer and they have really bad body odor and you move away. Well, the body odor, energetically speaking, universally speaking, is your energy. And when you're emitting a certain energy, you're actually miscreating in life. Now, hopefully I'm going to explain this correctly, is that when things aren't working for us, it's because we are admit, we're emitting an energy and the universe is corresponding to that energy. There we go. I got it out and I explained it the way that I wanted. So if we're creating what we want, then we're emitting an energy and the universe is actually responding to that energy and creating what we want. But if we're miscreating, the universe, like the body odor, backs off, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, and we're not creating what we want because of the energetic smell that we are emitting. So in this episode, I want to share some real stories with you about how my, you know, I myself have even been in these places. And I want to share that with you so that you can metaphorically clean up your energy so that you start getting what you want in life. Keep listening. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so many years ago, I did a program for people, and this is for, this was for people that were looking for a job back in 2009. And I was showing them how to be more persuasive and more influential in the interview process and their cover letters and everything else. And I remember a lot of people talking about how bad the economy was. And I wrote a blog post back then, and it was titled, You Smell Like Desperation. Now, what I mean by that, if you're desperate and you're needy, the universe reads that and then corresponds to that. If you're desperate, you're telling the universe that you do not have something. You wouldn't be desperate if you had it. So you're telling the universe you do not have something because you're desperate and needy. So as a result, the universe returns that experience to you, meaning keeping away from you the things that you want and the things that you think that you need. Something that I often tell people have you noticed that the people that need the money the most in life, generally, they have the least amount of money. And the people who need the money the least often have the most amount of money. Why? Because if they already have a lot of money, they don't need money. So what are they emanating? They're emanating abundance and prosperity, and the universe fulfills that. But if they're demonstrating neediness and they're being needy, the universe corresponds to that and literally takes away from them those things that they want because they're being needy, telling the universe they do not have those things. 
So what does your energy smell like? Now, I want to share with you, as I told you in the introduction, I want to share a personal story with you. This will probably, and I say it all the time and it doesn't happen, but I think this will be a short episode, but I know that I'm going to get my point across and that what I want to talk about, if I were to put, or I were to give you an orange, and I know I've used this metaphor before, but I'll use it, I'll use it again. And I know that when I use stories and metaphors in different ways, we hear it in a different way. And when we hear it in a different way, it means something differently to us. And hopefully we can get our mind around it. But if you squeeze a lemon, what comes out? Lemon juice. You don't get orange juice. You don't get strawberry juice. You get what's in it. If you squeeze an orange, what comes out? You don't get lemon juice. You don't get any other kind of juice. You don't get apple juice. You get orange juice. Why? What's in the orange is what comes out when it is squeezed. So when life squeezes you, maybe it's finances, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's health. When life squeezes you, what comes out of you? Because what comes out of you is what the universe will correspond and return more of back to you. Now, where did this episode originate from? I, I generally ponder, I think, I've got notes all over the place. Hundreds of episodes that I thought about doing. And oftentimes I find I create a list and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's it. There have been times I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do for this episode. I've got to do it tonight. And I know what I'm going to do. And then an hour before, boom, something else hits me. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, here's where I need to go with the podcast. So I did have an earlier episode in mind about being and ways of being. And I'm sure that I will do an episode or episodes on that. But today, this hit me when I was driving. Now, the reason why... I've mentioned before on here that I'm building a home and it was supposed to be a one-year a one -year contract. And the contractor even said it's never taken him more than nine months. And he bragged that I, you know, he's built over 300 homes and all these kind of things. We are on 36 months now and I will have people in my house tomorrow. And I've had people under my house cleaning up the mold because the contractor didn't properly ventilate under the house, and they've been under there for 30 days. Now, the reason I tell you that, it's been extremely, extremely taxing energetically. So life has been challenging for me in a lot of ways in the last year. Fortunately, I'm in good health because that's the most important thing. But it's been challenging in a lot of different ways, a lot of different business shifting around a lot of different reorganization, a lot of having to rethink about processes and things that we're doing and our offers and everything else. And it hasn't been working like it worked all the years prior. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, what shifted? But mainly, I lead the team and what shifted in me? And someone on my team walked up to me recently and said, Jim, you look Oh, you look really good. You look a lot lighter. And I am feeling better because we're almost done with the house and now I, I have peace in my life. But I started thinking about all the things that have gone sideways in the past year. And I can't talk about some of them because not all of them pertain to only me. They pertain to other people in my life and those are the things that I don't have the permission to share, but they affect my life. And I'm like, okay, so all these challenges this year, now here's the takeaway, a big takeaway for you. Consciously, I knew that I was keeping my attention in a good place. I knew that overall my days are pretty good days. You know, do I want to do for a living? I think some people have some unrealistic expectations of me. I have a lot of tools. So rarely, and I mean rarely, I can't even think of the last time that I've had a bad day where shit just flips upside down and I'm like, okay, I'm done. I don't have those anymore 
because I know that I'm making interpretations and I know that, you know, I'm making interpretations that are either working for me or against me. So I'm going to make interpretations that work for me. But, but, and things should generally go pretty good for me, despite all of the energetic chaos I've been living in. And Don Javier, my brother-in-law, he even said to me recently, he's like, you know, all the energy that you built over the years, building the, the things that you do to help people, when you moved into that house, the contractor told you that he would be done in one month because we moved in before it was done. And the contractor, the day we moved in, the contractor, he's full of shit, and his name is Matt Cavanaugh in Sedona, Arizona. His exact words were, in one month, you won't even recognize this house. It's going to be done. Well, he dropped the ball, and we're one year later, finally, finally finishing up. And my brother-in-law said, all the energy you took to build your programs in your life basically all got shattered that year, and you've got to rebuild it. So I've been rebuilding a lot, and I'm okay because I've learned some amazing lessons. I'll come back to my point. I saw something on YouTube today. It was really interesting. I haven't watched it all yet, but it was about an actor named, named Army Hammer. And he was becoming a very famous actor. And he fell from grace a couple of years ago because a couple of his girlfriends accused him of all kinds of things that were very unsavory. Now, you may know of him, you may not, but the point is, I watched a podcast interview about him today. And what I started thinking was, is I wasn't there. I don't know the truth of what happened. But he talked about how all these people, you know, basically made him, helped him feel good about himself. And then after all this came out, it was the reverse, people attacking him. And then an interesting thing, I was watching about how he managed his energy, which is how a lot of people do. He said, anytime I needed to feel good about anything, I could just type something on Instagram and I have all these people loving on me and liking me and everything. Then after all this came out and he said, I don't know it's true or not. He said, a lot of it's not true. And people just started hating on me. And he said, what was working positively then went very negatively. But what he said in the first 10 minutes of the interview that I listened to he said, I was getting all of my self-esteem and my value from the external world. And when that went away, I wasn't getting it. And I was getting hate, the, re the reverse, uh, the opposite of the external value. And he goes, that's when I had to come to really look at myself, to know myself. And he said, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but it's the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. Now, with me this past year, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But you know what? I learned things that I never would have had the opportunity to learn. Now, how, how am I tying this into the podcast? Well, so today I was driving and I was thinking, okay, I'm doing some things right now that aren't going in the way they should be going in terms of metrics. Meaning, I know my business metrics. I know what numbers look like. I know what they should be based upon ad budget, based upon email list size, based upon tribe, and the metrics are off. The first thing that people tend to do is blame something. Facebook algorithm, this, that, or the other. What I did is I said, okay, what in you... You're being squeezed, Jim. What's coming out of you? Juice, metaphorically speaking. What's coming out of you? Because what you're seeing happen is not a disaster. It's not a catastrophe. It's not what you would normally anticipate knowing metrics. It's not what it should be. And it still can turn up to be what I want it to be. We don't know yet. But I'm like, okay. The first place people go is they blame something external. And I'm asking myself internally, okay, Jim, what is off with you? And what I'm looking at, and it, it dawned on me that I have more work to do when it comes to being open-hearted. 
anyone that knows me will tell you that I'm a very open hearted, very, I'm very direct here at the podcast, but I do a lot of that for a reason because a lot of people respond to that and people basically, they, 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 they understand it. And a lot of people want more directness because they want someone to, to help perhaps f- help them find the answers. But anyone that knows me knows me that I'm very generous, very caring, very loving, and I love my friends and I take care of my friends and my family. And I'm very loyal to them. And so I started looking and I said to myself today, okay, Jim, how are you being? Now, you might have heard me talk. We just did the Be to Have series. And you might have even actually invested the 97 bucks in the, in the nine day um, Get Unstuck Challenge, which is all about your ways of being. Everything. And as I said on a call a couple of days ago in the Be to Have, in the Be to Have series, is that everything comes down to your being because being is the genesis of what you create in life. Okay, I want to segue from the episode for just one moment. And I want to ask you, where were you most stuck in 2023? What things held you back the most? When I ask people, you know, why they're not getting what they want in life, People often say, well, I was stuck with X, Y, Z, or, and this may resonate with you, I feel stuck. If you're feeling stuck, one question I want you to ask yourself is, what is it costing me? What is it costing me to not resolve this and to battle being stuck? And when you add that up, whether it's money and especially in business, But in your health and your relationships, when you add that up, it's extremely costly to be stuck in life. Now, all this being said, I created a new challenge. I created it last year. Many thousands of people have gone through it. And it's called the Get Unstuck Challenge. Interesting, the name's all about getting unstuck. Now, in this challenge, it's a nine-day challenge. And I walk you through at a very profound, at a very spiritual, you know, level, and even at a cosmic level, I walk you through who and how you're being as a being, meaning your presence on the planet. And when you understand that, when you understand the nature of you at a very deep level, now you might have heard me say be to have before, and that's more about 3D reality. Who do you have to be so you can do so you can have? But I'm talking you know, what does it mean to be? And then what is that power associated with that? When you understand that, you automatically get unstuck in life. This program, never offered it before to you guys. We're offering it now. I don't think we've offered it to the podcast and an ad. Maybe we have, maybe we have. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we haven't offered it a lot if we have. But we're offering the Get Unstuck Challenge again. It's only $97. Thousands of people have been through it, and they rave about the results they're getting, and I know that you will do the same thing. So, again, ponder the question, what does it cost me? What am I giving up? What peace of mind? What happiness? What money? What relationships am I giving up in life because I am stuck in my own crap? Now, as you're thinking about that, click the link. Go to tcp.jimforton.com slash unstuck. Again, and we'll drop the link in the show notes, tcp.jimforton.com slash unstuck. Download the program, you get started right away, and your life will start changing dramatically. When you apply what you're learning in that program, your life will start changing in very dramatic ways, very, very quickly. And as a matter of fact, in the next nine days. Okay, back to the episode. And I said to myself, okay, Jim, your life is a reflection of your being. What ways are you not being to create better and different outcomes for you? And analytically, I can say I'm a very kind and very loving person, but I started looking at maybe I need to open my heart even more. Maybe. There are things that I'm not seeing. And for all of us, we all have blind spots. There are things that I'm not seeing 
that I need to open myself up to more. Something else that came to me, I'm going to hop around here a little bit. This past year would have broken a lot of people in half. I see it all the time in the transformational coaching program. People going through one-tenth of what I've been through, through and they're, they're crying about it. It doesn't, it doesn't really phase me anymore. But I look at, again, my ways of being, and I look at, okay, how must I be? And if I can't see it, I've got to dig even deeper because we can look at the external world just like that person in the nicely dressed outfit I talked about when I opened this episode, and they look good. So all of our behaviors look good on the outside, but when you squeeze it, the juice on the inside comes out, and that juice, we might think we're actually emitting orange juice or releasing orange juice, but we might be releasing lemon juice. So I'm like looking at myself going, okay, so Jim, you thought you had healed from the chaos of your house. You thought you had healed from that. And I noticed today, full transparency, I have an entire room that is full of spiritual artifacts. And there are some very sacred spiritual tools in there that I've used over the years that Don Javier, as a shaman and a sorcerer, has helped energetically charge. And I'll just say it that way, meaning he's energetically infused them as tools. And I walked in there today, and I've been in this house for a year, and we finally were able to unpack a couple of months ago, and that room's not all the way set up yet. I still have a, a very large spiritual picture to put over my main altar that I've not put up yet. And I said to myself, you know what? You're not back in your spiritual rhythm energetically yet. And when you're in that rhythm, everything hums along. Everything is beautiful and everything is bliss and everything is divine. And it hums along. By choice, you've not finished up that room. And the reason I haven't been truthful here is I have some maintenance people coming in tomorrow um, to, to finish up some work in that room. And after that, then I will complete the room. The reason I don't complete it prior to having all labor done in there from the contractor is that room, once it is done, no one goes in that room except me and my partner and the topic and the subject. I don't even wear shoes in there, literally, and I've never worn shoes in there. It's a sacred space. And I said, okay, you need to get it finished up. And when you get it finished up, that will probably help your energy return to where it needs to be. Okay, in a long, a long convoluted way, what you want to look at here is we tend to fool ourselves thinking we look nice in that jacket and we're doing everything right, but things still aren't working in a particular way. And we have to look at, okay, when things don't work the way that I want them to work, what energy, like squeezing an orange, what energy is coming out of me? And for a lot of people, it's anger, resentment, frustration, fear, and all these emotions. For me, it wasn't any of those. It was just like exasperation to some degree. It's like, oh my God, more things I got to deal with and more things I've got to work through and more things I have to manage and more things I have to figure out. So what I'm sharing with you in this episode, short and sweet episode, is the universe never, it never tests you. It reflects you. And like an orange, you squeeze it, the orange juice comes out. So you look at your life and what's coming out in terms of your external experience is a reflection of the juice inside of you. I started with a metaphor. I started with a metaphor of obviously the person well-dressed and they look good. But the whole metaphor is even though they look good and even though all your behaviors look good and everything looks like you've got all your ducks in a row, it's still going to correspond to your energy. I want to go back about 20 years. When I lived in New York City, when I come back, the first thing I was always excited to do was to see Don Javier. Um, he's a sorcerer on the wall, a shaman, my mentor, and my brother-in-law, who I love deeply as my mentor but also as my brother-in-law, because he's a really cool dude. He's a good dude. He's a good guy. And I remember for about a year, 
he would very, with a lot of finesse, he would basically just kind of ignore me. And I was baffled. I was like, why is he ignoring me? And my sisters, his, his, his partner, my sisters and my other sister noticed it as well. Now I noticed it because I noticed the energy. And I'm not going to go into the long story here, but later, and I'm glad that he did because I learned a lot about attachment and letting go about people giving you recognition or love or people responding to you in the way you want them to respond to you. The whole lesson was his mentor, also a, a shaman, told me, give no care to who pays attention to you or not pay attention to you. Manage your energy well. But he told me, and I'm just being transparent, at that time in my life when I was living in New York City, he said, you weren't negative, you weren't hateful, but I didn't want to be around the frequency. And then I looked back many years ago, well, what frequency did New York create in me that I carried that frequency with me? Now, I love New York. I don't go back. And I went back to speak a few years ago and I'm like, Phew. I can't manage his energy anymore. Physically, like the guy in the suit I started with, the metaphor, it all looks great. I mean, I love the city. I love I love the, the, the culture and the park and the museum. I love the city and the hot dogs and the grace papaya and the pizza. I love it all. But I'm not of that frequency anymore. So I can't manage it anymore. So he moved away from me because my frequency changed when I moved there and it changed into partly the frequency of New York City. And he said he moved away from me. He's very polite about it because he didn't want to be around the energy. So we've got to be careful and look at what en energy am I creating because my external world is reflecting my energy. But where I've, I've held myself and I needed to dig deeper and it came to one thing. Now, where I've held myself, his mentor once said to me, everything always has been, is now, and will always be fine. Everything in life will always be fine because you're going to be a dead bag of skin one day, and it's still going to be fine. So be at peace now. And what I recognize today, which is why I'm doing this episode, is when I said opening my heart more, for me, that's even being at more peace. I can finally, because I had recognized I had created a lot of um, nervous system anxiousness living in a house that was always on pins and needles and people on it every day and all the chaotic energy. My nervous system was responding to that energy. And it happened every day for almost a year because we had all the finish out work to finish in the house that should have been done in the month. And what I recognized is my nervous system was locked on some stressful, anxious energy, but I didn't even know it. So that's what I'm talking about. So we, we, we think we know things, but we have to really dig deeper in what energy am I emitting? So for me, it's getting back to even more peace, peace and well-being. Because from peace and well-being, we can create anything we want to create. But oftentimes, we let the external world take that peace and well-being away from us. And when we do, then we wonder why things aren't happening like we think we want them to happen. So your transformational takeaway is when things aren't going right, ask yourself. When they're not going, everything's always going right. It's going 100% corresponding to you. Let me rephrase that. When things aren't going in the way that you think you want them to go, simply stop and ask yourself, what's squeezing me? How do I feel about this? What energy am I emitting? And your energy is your feelings and your emotions. And if you're not getting the results that you want, because feelings and, emo and emotions are vibration and frequency, and those are what create for us. So if you're being squeezed in life with money, health, relationships, or whatever, look at what is squeezing you, and then actually start talking to yourself about letting go, a lack of attachment, recognizing it first, and letting go. And a simple way to do that is just sit quietly. Just sit quietly in gratitude. And when you sit in gratitude, your entire frequency and vibration changes then. So the question for you is, 
when you're squeezed, what comes out of you? Because generally when we're squeezed, the juice becomes a little more sour. And so then what happens when the juice becomes more sour, we attract, metaphorically, more sour back into our lives. Okay, so when you're squeezed, what comes out? Because what comes out is going to come back. Alrighty, thanks for listening. And by the way, if you're new here, go all the way back to the beginning and start from there. Now, you can keep listening, obviously, to episodes as we go, but all these episodes were designed in some way to give you some kind of takeaway to help you create a better experience of life. So, if you're brand new to the podcast, go all the way back to the beginning and start listening there. I promise you, you will be glad that you did. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you over on another episode. Bye-bye.